Hey guys, how are we? How are we doing? Almost forgot my microphone. I am very, very excited today. Today is the day we are going to be talking about subject two, subject to the existing financing. So how are, how do you get deals without having to use your credit? How do you get deals where you can still get the two point seven seven the twos and three percent interest rates? How do you do that? We're going to talk about today. So. I love it, love it. I'm glad we're all uh, on here and live. So make sure to please share this if you're if you're tuning in. We're going to help more people understand this type of stuff, and also um, um, like, comment, help as much as possible. It's very very helpful. Um, and this is going to be a very interactive live. So I know a lot of people have a lot of questions, have a lot of uh, like, how does this even work or what it even is. Um, all of that stuff. So feel free to please put in the comments and I'll address them as they come up um, and we are ready to go. So if you guys are watching this live right now, right here, put in the comments right now, live, 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 live. So put in the comments live. So I know that you're, you're awake. There's, there's eight so far, nine that's listening. Let's go. The, it, the numbers are going up. I love it. So if you guys are just jumping on hit live in the comments, if you are listening to this on the replay or watching this on the replay, Type in the comments replay. So then I'll know where y'all coming from and where we're all at. And if you're also watching the replay and you have questions, put in the comments as well. So we can um so we can find out exactly where uh or so we I can answer those questions too. Um depending depending on the questions. We may be like a let's chat about it, it could be complicated, who knows? Okay, phenomenal. All right, we got Lop Jeremiah, Don, Frank, Tyson. Uh, live. No, I am asleep. <laughs> He's asleep. Okay, great. We got, a, we got some good numbers of, uh, of people jumping on already. Awesome. I love it. Love it. Again, put in the live in the comment live if you're listening to this live. Okay, guys, let's talk about subject two and put in the comments. What questions do you have about subject two and whatever it may be. Maybe the question is like, what is subject two? Let's answer that right now, actually. S subject two is is one of my favorite strategies to to fund your your deal so subject to is actually a shorthand from a term it's called subject to the existing financing so you're buying the property subject to the financing that's already in place for that property this is different from assuming assuming a loan it's not the same that is one probably the number one misconceptions of subject to is they think that's assuming the loan. Assuming the loan means that the loan stays in place, but I'm going to the the lender and saying, hey, I'm I am going to assume this loan. So instead of it's going to be in the seller's name, it's going to be in my name. And you got the qualify. You're still using your rec, your 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 credit, and most of the most of the terms of the loan stay the same, and you just take over the loan. So that process takes just as long as you would if you're just going to qualify for a particular loan. And it's actually stays on, and, and it's on your credit at that point. Okay. Um, so that is assuming a loan subject to is not assuming the loan. And this is where people kind of that, that aren't quite familiar. This is where they get confused on. And you have to really understand it to be able to explain it to the seller on how this all works and, and why is it a benefit to them on top of that. Right? So subject to, when I buy properties, it's, 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 it's always in my company's name, not my personal name for, for tax and also just uh, um, safety reasons, right? So if I buy a property, and so a caveat, if I say that um, I'm buying a property with my name, I'm always, always in my company's name, so just to be clear. So when I buy a property, subject to the title, the deed goes into my company's name. So now it's not Mr. Seller's name. It's, it's now it's, it's Jared's name. Okay. Um, the mortgage that's on there, the lien on the property on a typical sale, that would actually be paid off with new financing or through cash. So what happens is that loan actually stays in place in the same position, save everything. And the loan is actually stays in the seller's name, but the, but the property is now yours. And then you as the buyer are making payments, uh, on that loan. So a lot of times those, the, that loan could be behind. And so you, part of the process of buying the property is getting it current 
and then taking over the payments. So you're making the payments for the seller, but it's on your property that you own now. Does that make sense? Um, it, you, as, as the owner of the property, you can refinance it down the road or right away or whatever. And then it would, it would put all the loan into your name. A lot of times the subject to, so even though the loan on the property could be another 28 years left on the, on the property, a lot of times to, to really get the, the, the sellers that say yes, we'll put a balloon on it, which means it's after a certain period of time, I need to either refinance it or pay off the remainder loan. And typically it's going to be five plus years to put a balloon on it. Okay. So does that make sense as far as what is subject to? And then we'll go into more details as, as as far as how to get it, how to find it, how to negotiate it. What questions do you guys have about subject two? Do you that, you, that we haven't haven't quite covered just yet? Okay. Awesome. Oh, and I got I forgot to put my phone on. Do not disturb. So my apologies. My apologies, everybody. Um, yeah, subject two is, is phenomenal, and, and the reason why it's really good and why it's it's. Subject to right now is easier to get than ever have, than ever, ever has been. And even including, and I, I, I put that in the same category as seller financing. So seller financing subject to creative financing is the easiest to get than, than I've ever seen. And, and I've only been doing this for, for six, seven years now. So not like I've been doing it for, you know, decades or whatever, but, but here, here's why high interest rates are actually your best friend for the current market and and why subject two is phenomenal it really easy to get or easier to get um than it ever has so 18 months ago the market was going crazy right though anyone that's in real estate or even like he hearing about it if you're buying a property on it or whatever you know it was going like crazy and so Everyone was like, they were again over, over asking price. I mean, it was just going nuts. Like we, we, I remember doing a few flips and one flip in particular, it was a short flip is we, we had it for like three months and put it back in the market. And within that three months, that property appreciated over 10,000 bucks in just three months. And I was like, Whoa, okay. Instead of making, you know, 50, like we thought we made 60 I'm like, Oh geez. Okay. I'm not complaining about that, but dang. And so people weren't really interested in, in doing that because like, well, I could just, I mean, I, I don't need to, I can just put on the market get a cash offer uh, really quickly and not, not have to worry about, you know, any of the potential downsides to, to, uh, to subject to, or to, uh, uh, or just creative financing. Well, the downsides that they're thinking of, right? Um, okay. Yeah. Great question, Don. I'm going to get that. And Yes. So Nicholas is, are we asking questions in the comments? Yes, you are. So put your questions in the comments um, and we will get that, get right to them. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Now we're getting some really, really good questions. I'm liking this. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit those just right after I'm done explaining why this market is phenomenal for subject to creative financing. So right now what we have going on is that all of the sellers that, that they were, cause with, with the higher interest rates that happened, all of the sellers, um, like if I'm selling a property at, at five, there's one property we're, we're just about to accept an offer on that we're, we did flip on. And so it, it's a higher end here in Twilla. So it's 500 and, and it's 80,000 is what we, we put it on there. So when all the interest rates go up, suddenly the people that would qualify for that 580 beforehand, now because interest rates are high, they don't qualify the, because the payments are going up. So the debt to, 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 um, debt to income ratio is, is not high enough for them to qualify for, to, to basically make that big payment, which would happen with the, the high interest rate. So now we have the high, the higher end homes, the buyer pool reduces. Okay. So now it's, it's harder for a seller to get those crazy offers like they used to. Um, and, and, and for buyers to get qualified for those really nice homes or even maybe some is not nice homes, but like the homes that are, that are selling for 400, 800, 600,000, right? So right now the, the agents are even more open to, cause before I would never look on the market. Never. Someone gave me a, an on market deal. I'd look at it for like three minutes and then, then just throw it away. Right. Or just put it off to the side. Now, like half my stuff is, is on the market. It's on the MLS, 
you know, before just be 100% focused on off market, but now it's like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna have some agents help me find some stuff, which has been very, very, very helpful. So now the agents are even more willing to have conversations about creative financing and sellers are more willing to, and open to having uh, conversations about creative financing because they can either have a couple options. If I'm trying to sell my property at that 580 and, and it's no one's buying it, you know, and maybe I, I, I could, a couple different options. I could leave it in the market forever and probably not sell it or I, I reduce the price. So those are some options which I can do as a seller. And so when, when, and here's the thing, most of those deals are not advertised as creative financing. They're not, they're not advertised as, Hey, it's, this is a subject to trust subject to transaction. It's not advertised like that at all. Sometimes, sometimes there are, but most of the time not. So they're created. So having conversations with the sellers, um, and Don, Don kind of asked that question, having conversations with the sellers and it's creating the deals, not finding them. That's two different things. Finding them, you're just, you got lucky. Good job. Creating them. That's where you get consistency. That's when you get real, real wealth or real income potentials is by creating the deals, not just finding them. Okay. So now we have the market in, in this place where agents are more open to talk about creative financing. Um, sellers are more open to talk about creative financing, which subject to seller financing, lease options, all the above, right? And so it really opens the door up. And, and here's another benefit why right now is amazing. So 18 months ago, and I call them YouTube University Bros, and they're gals too, but you know, the YouTube University people, they were the ones that were buying that, like, oh, great, real estate's phenomenal. It's really hot right now. So they start buying properties. And, and I was, I was wholesaling back then and I would have people like, I would have some deals were a little bit tight and I sent it out there to see if someone wanted it as maybe as a personal home or whatever. And I had, I had these guys, they would always like to pick it up like crazy. Like, Oh, and I would ask them like, Hey, so you're sure this is going to make sense. Cause I don't want people to lose money. I don't want people, I want people to make money on my deals. Right. And like, are you sure this is going to work out for you? You know I mean? Cause my numbers are a little bit tight, but I wanted to see who's, you know, if, if it made sense for somebody. And like, yeah, it is tight for us. We're, we're going to break even on this one. I'm like, I'm like, well, then why are you buying it? What are you doing? Like, are you going to keep it? Like as rental then, then that makes sense. But no, we're going to flip it. So why are you holding on to it? I was like, oh yeah, it's going to appreciate 30, 30 grand between now and we're done. And that's where our profits are going to be. That's my, that was my reaction. I'm like, all right, man. I mean, it's. I, I, I wouldn't suggest that, but you know, that's fine. I'll, I'll still, I still sell the deal to you. So that's fine. So those, those guys are just like the, cause in an up market, everyone's a genius. You can fall ass backwards into a deal and make money on a down market. That's when you, that's when you create deals. That's when the opportunities are even there or more plentiful, but you have to create them. And so on this down market or, or the sustainable market, it hasn't really gone down too much, but it's, it's not as crazy as it was. Uh, the, the YouTube university bros are gone or most of them. The, the, the novice investors are, are, are kind of dwindled out. Oh, it's a bad market. You can't do it. The interest rates are too high. I'm like, pff, I don't care. I, I love the high interest rates. And now, um, which leaves it for, so now like on the market, like I, I'm not bidding against a bunch of people that are just hoping for appreciation or they they, they have zero idea what they're doing. They're just going to bid it because they want to win that deal. And it's not a deal. They end up losing money. So a lot of those, that, that stuff's kind of gone away. The market's kind of perfect. So right now it's phenomenal. And here's the cool part with high interest rates, you can actually sell a property. I, I'm going to get into, I'll get into a little bit of this here, but you can sell a property on seller financing at a high interest rate. So if, if the, the prime interest rate right now, if you have like 800 credit score, I think you get 7.5. If I can get a loan for 7.5, but I am offering a seller financing either at 7.5 or maybe a little bit lower, or a little bit above, people aren't gonna aren't gonna wince at that as much. I might be able to sell do a seller financing deal on on a, a, a six or seven, or five even. So we did a subject to deal, and it was the interest rate was seven, or sorry, the interest rate on that subject to deal was 2.75 percent. Okay, 2.75 phenomenal. And guess what? We were selling it on creative on seller financing. 
we're selling it. So if we are first doing it at, at six, at selling at 6% and we are requiring a down payment, which basically gets all the money back that we put into it, we're making 3%, almost well, a little more than 3% of interest on the bank's money. Cause the subject to loan was 322,000. So this is something called a wraparound. This, this is get, I'm not gonna go too, too deep in the weeds on this one, but I just want you to kind of think about some of the possibilities with these subject to deals. So I have possession of a loan of 2.7%. I'm gonna sell it. So the loan 2.7% and then I'm gonna sell it using a, a, a wraparound, it's called a wraparound. I'm gonna sell it on seller financing at, at six. So the, the gap between the six and the 2.7 goes to me. So I am making, 3.25% on that $322,000 of the bank's money. So I'm making 3% over 3% annually on the bank's money. You could be buying, picking up properties as a subject too that maybe don't need any rehab. Do a, if carpet and paint, small stuff, whatever, put it back on the market for subject to have the down payment big enough where you can get your get the the agent's commissions paid and then the money you put into it back because there's a lot of people like me that if they're going to buy a deal they need to be some sort of creative financing if they can't do creative financing then it's gonna be hard because for example my agi my adjusted gross income was nineteen thousand last year the government thinks i made nineteen thousand because I wrote, I wrote off everything there's so many techniques and strategies where you know i'm paying my kids off and there's a whole lot of things which i can do to to reduce my tax burden legally that, but on paper though, it shows that it, in every rental I have is like, shows as a loss, but I'm doing okay, trust me. And so the nights, like to be qualified for a loan, basically like, no, no kidding me. And so there's plenty of people like me, entrepreneurs that can, that can have a huge down payment and they get a decent interest rate. They're buying their, their property, whether for a rental or for their personal, whatever. Sometimes there's people with questionable immigrant status, that's hard for them to get a loan. Phenomenal. So there's plenty of buyers to buy seller financing, and I don't, I don't want to get I, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on, on the wraparounds, but those are just the type of things. And and even with your rentals, you can be picking up subject to deals at three or four percent, or even two percent, depending. Because we're not going to I don't know my crystal ball's not very clear, but we're not going to be seeing two percent interest rates for maybe never. If I had a guess, if I put money on, we would never see interest rate at two. Maybe high threes again, that's a possibility, but I don't think we're ever going to see anything with a two in front of it and probably not even with a three in front of it, you know, at least, at least in, in our lifetimes. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, but you can lock in a rental with someone else's credit at the lower interest rate by buying it subject to it's phenomenal. The stuff that you can do. And, and, and the amazing thing is, is the, the cool thing about subject two is you're not using your own credit. So typically if I want to go out and do the, the, the normal way is to go save up a down payment for investment property, 20% down. Uh, I'd spend a year's saving it up, buy it, use my own credit, and then I have a rental property, right? Uh, and then I have to save up another couple years to buy another one. And, and obviously the rental income is gonna help you save more money, but you still have the, the expenses on the rental and everything finally when there's no person there between you know, if they have to do rehabs on it between uh, uh, renters, all the all type of stuff you got to factor in. So years and years and years, eventually you're going to get 10 and then you're capped out. You're not going to qualify for any, even if you have the income to produce it, it's going to be challenging to get more than 10 loans on your own credit. Maybe you have a spouse, you get them, but then after 20, you know, that's it. You know, my, my benchmark is I want to make at least 500 cash flow in each rental minimum. You know, if I get 10, that's only, it's only 5,000 a month in cash flow, I, I don't know about you, but I want a lot more than 5K. I mean, that's not enough. So it, it, it's, it's phenomenal. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Let's let's go back into uh, some of your guys' questions, okay? Is this is this making sense? I hope I didn't lose you guys when I was talking about wraparound. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of you guys do understand that part because I got some, uh, I can tell already in the comments, so I have some experienced investors and some people that are just trying to wrap their heads around it. So, um, I don't want to lose everybody, so hopefully we're we're all on the same page here. But it's, if it's all making sense, hit in there. Yeah, I got you, Jared. Or we're good. Uh, great. Uh, Frank's makes sense. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so Don's question: How hard is it to get the homeowner to agree to subject two? 
it's not that difficult to be honest. If, if you are just talking through an agent, that is difficult. Um, if I'm if I'm going on the market and I'm seeing a, a potential deal and I'm just either I have my agent talk to their agent and then talk to them, that phone line is a challenge, which is another beauty of this market. I've been able to get a lot of agents to allow me to get on the phone with the seller, which before was like a lot of brokers would tell their 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 real their 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 agents like never let the the seller talk directly to the to the to the, to your your clients never 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 now they're letting me do it they're have they're they're allowing me to have those conversations because then then we can explain things answer the questions in real life it's not through that phone line like and it, and if the agent doesn't quite understand it it's gonna be really hard for them to show them the benefit of it and and how any type of negativeness is it or negativeness whatever any type of uh, uh concern they have they won't be able to overcome their objection because they just don't know how to explain it and they probably didn't explain it well to begin with if you are dealing with agents this is the most important question you will ever have in, in what are the subject to creative financing anything like that this is the most important question write this down this is an important question guys okay or or not a question this is an important statement i'm sorry when you're talking to agents on the market and about creative financing, this is the statement. Don't worry, the down payment will be big enough for any and all commissions. This is that line right there is the difference between closing deals and not closing deals. Don't worry, the down payment will be big enough for any and all commissions. I don't care what agents say they're doing it for money oh and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that but I, I hear all the time oh well i just want the best for my client the hell you do the hell you know you don't come on let's be real like sure you want to help them but you're doing it if if they if you weren't going to get paid you would stop doing it I, i'm sorry like i i want to help people and i help people in tough situations but if the payment stopped i i wouldn't do the extra f emphasis on 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 helping them i really wouldn't Let's be real, you know? So when you let them know that their, their pockets are going to be, going to be filled, suddenly it becomes a lot easier. Not, not like easy, but easier. Okay. Does that make, that makes sense guys? Right. Good, good, good. Um, so I have so asked so having that statement, having the agent on board. And if you're, also, I would also recommend having the, the seller's agent represent you as well if you're not an agent. Or even if you are an agent, they can still represent you. Why is that important? One, now the, now the agent knows they're going to get their commissions, and then plus they're going to get double commissions. If, if their agent's commissions in the last couple of years has been reduced from always 3% on both on one side, and then so 6% total for, for agencies, now it's like on average like 5 or 4 so their their commissions have reduced and I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing so now if you're saying like okay yeah i mean i'll put, yeah let's 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 do you can represent me represent and and there's in utah you can do that the seller has to agree to it but that's that's usually a pretty easy sell and so now the agent's really on your side because it's like oh suddenly yeah they get they're going to get double commissions when they work with jared so they freaking love that they love that um so when you're on the phone, so when, to get them on the phone, uh, at first, I, I t I'll tell the agent, I explain how, how Subject 2 works and, and some other options. And I purposely am overly complicated when I'm talking to an agent. So the reason why I, I, I do this is because I, I want them to be a little bit weary about talking to their agent. Because now that they're on board first, now that they're on board of like, okay, yeah, I want to work with Jared. I'm definitely going to, I want it double commissions. Let's do this. Uh, they're jumping up and down inside. They don't say it outside as much, but they're like, oh yeah, this is this, in their head. They're like, yeah, but they're, they're already spending, like I can buy, I can pay off this debt. They already spent the money. Okay. In their heads. And so I'm overly complicating things a little bit. And so when they're like, ah, and, and you know what? Here's what I say. Like, yeah, you know what? I, I, I think, I don't think I'm explaining this very well. And 
and I'm sure your 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 clients are are going to have more questions once we kind of once you go through and explain everything like how this works and the benefits for them and how they're going to make more money if we do it this way. Would you be opposed if if maybe we jumped on a three way call like you called them? I don't want their phone number. I don't want their contact information at all. We'd only have to meet them face to face. But you know, would you be opposed if we jumped on a phone call? We can kind of explain how we're going to do this and and how it's going to you know, help them in their situation. Would, would you be opposed to that? So you're asking in, in a no oriented question and like, no, I, I, well, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I don't know that I don't know if they'd want to like, Oh, sure. Yeah, I get that. I mean, and then, then you, you continue that conversation, right? So would you be opposed to having those conversations? Okay, great. Uh, once you get to the homeowner conversation, let me let me let me check the comments real quick. Can we talk more about the balloon and if someone wants to buy a new home in a, in a year or two? Oh, perfect. Yes, we're going to talk more about the balloon. Here, I got I got here. Um, how you how do you convince us uh, convince the seller to give you the property a subject to without without he without him feeling you're taking advantage of him? Okay, good. Best market for creative financing. You're right, Edward. Only two loan types are assumable based on uh, criteria FHA and FHA. Yep. That's absolutely right. Um, TC plays a bigger role when when you're um, constructing. What's TC? What do you mean by TC? Uh, subject to. Uh, when you're not using your own money in a subject to deal, how do you structure the private money and partnerships? Okay, we talk about that, Juan. We'll talk about it here just in a little bit. So we'll, we'll come back to that. So um, Perfect. Okay. So more about just, okay. So we're on the same path. You guys are asking the questions. I'm kind of hitting, hitting that, that way. So now that you're, you kind of jump the agent and, and here's the thing doing subject two, I like to have, I, I like those off market because then from the get go, I don't have to worry about the jumping through the hoops through agents and whatnot. Um, typically most subject to, and I'll talk about how we're explaining it to them. They don't feel like they're being taken advantage of because we're not, you're not taking advantage of them. Right. Well, some people may, may, maybe they are, but how I do it, I don't take advantage of people. Um, so I, I like to have off market ideally, right? And, and like the number, the biggest, one of the, a, a big way to get subject to is if they're going through foreclosure, um, because you can help them out in the situation, right? And um, they already have a loan and, and so you know that they have a loan already in place. They're behind. There's a time frame. If if you're looking for for buying properties at a discount, if there's no time urgency, it's gonna be very hard to get the price that you're looking for. So there's no urgency to sell. So maybe they're they're going through foreclosure. Maybe they're getting divorced, and so they they want to, they have to sell the property uh, because of they you know they're living together and they they do not want that or they they want the equity or whatever. Uh, Maybe they're that maybe it's a probate, someone passes away and they want to sell it, not, not because of a certain date or whatnot, um, but they want to get their money out. And, and sometimes, if there's a reverse mortgage on it, you can't really do subject to in this one, but if there's a reverse mortgage on it, you have to refinance or sell it within a certain period of time after the person dece is deceased. Otherwise, the bank can foreclose on it and take over the property. So, Time limits are going to be your best friend to, to, you're going to find more people to help that have time limits and more willing to, to get the discount. Because here's the thing, people will pay equity for peace of mind all the time. 100%. People will, will pay money for peace of mind. Absolutely. Uh, they would love it. They, they, it. And it's a win for them. They're not, they're not sad or terrible about it. Okay. Now, now that you're talking to sellers, you're, you're face to face. Um, oh, transaction coordinators. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I was like, TC, what's TC? I mean, eh, no, I don't, I, I've never used a trans transactional coordinator even when I was an agent. So, I mean, they're, they're helpful. They do the paperwork for you, but like you don't need them anyways. So when I'm talking to sellers or when you guys are talking to sellers, Here's the thing, and this is was hard for me to 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 implement and to do personally for me. When you're talking to a seller, and this is just negotiation in general, 
if you are talking more than the seller, you're doing it wrong. You are convincing them it's a good deal. You need to have them convince themselves it's a good deal. Okay? You you can still control the conversation. You can still control where it's going. It gets to the, your points, your talking points you want to talk about. But you do that in forms of questions. Questions are the answers. So if I'm sitting, I'm talking to Frank, and we're having a conversation, and he's talking 80% of the time, I'm talking 20, which that's a good ratio, okay? Frank thinks there's a subconscious, there's a subconscious trick, which is, this is also in, in a book called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Very good book, highly recommend it. But Chris thinks that, or not Chris, but Frank thinks that he's, he's actually in charge of the conversation because he's talking the most. In reality, I'm the one asking the questions of Frank and he is responding to my, to my prompts. So he's responding to my prompts and so I am steering him. So even if he goes off on a tangent or, or off here, la la land, I can, I can redirect him by asking another question to put him back to the, to the line where I wanted to go. Okay. So asking the questions are, 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 are the key. There are two things you need to find out and not surface level. You have, you, if you go into service and I know we're talking about emotional, you know, it, it has to be emotions, hundred percent. If you don't get to the emotion of why they're doing things or what they're running away from, you're, you're, you can, unless they're a lay down cell, you're, you're never, you're not going to get anything that then you're playing by the numbers and then good luck with that. So there's two things you need to find out. One is what are they running towards? What's their pleasure? What are they, what would they like to see happen? What do they want to happen? And what are they running away from? What are their pain points? You need those two things. Now it is not, it's not just service level. So obviously like, okay, let's say they're going for foreclosure is a good example. If I'm talking to a seller and, and I say, oh, so why do you want to sell? Well, what about those at home? Oh, okay, great. That's why they want to sell. Okay. Yes, that that's probably, a, there's some truth there. But that's surface level. And like, oh, so why, why do you want to sell at this price? Oh, because I want to make money. Oh, okay, yeah, great. So you want to make money and then not go through foreclosure. Jeez, Jared said this. You have to, I have to ask a lot of questions. That's pretty easy. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. People don't care about money. Money doesn't matter. It's what money can get them is why we want money. I can have a big pile, a billion dollars in suitcases all over my house and it's filling up everywhere. That doesn't mean no good. What does, what, what does me good is what I can go and I can buy that big house. I can go buy that, that boat that I want, that I want to I, that car, or I can take my family to vacation with that money. So it's not, it's the vacation. It's the place. It's the paying off debts, not having, not just paying off debts, but not having the stress and worry about those debts hanging over you. Not you're buying people stop calling you to collect your, your that you're in collections to feel in peace, to feel like the power's not going to be turned off in the middle of the day to feel to, to be, to it's a feeling is nothing to do with actual money. So if you get, if you ask service level que uh, questions, you get service, service level answers. Okay. So you have to go in deep and, and here's some quick little ways to really get into, and I'll probably do another live to go really deep in depth. Maybe we can do some like, role playing. If you guys would like to see some like role playing of, of like negotiations, like we can, we can bring, I could bring someone on onto the live and we can just like just role play and, and that person could be as big of a dick as they want and that's okay. And I'll show you how I handle it. Would that be cool? If you guys would like to see that, maybe in the next week or some other time, put in the comments role play and we can talk about like how to actually, we could, so you could see me actually do it. That'd be cool. Um, so put in the comments role play if you'd like to see that, you know, in a future live. Okay. So, okay. If I'm talking about their, some of their pain points and you're saying, so what's your pain point? You ask questions um, like, so this house is, is really pretty and, and it doesn't this house could it could be a disaster it doesn't matter it's a pendulum effect if i say that the house is pretty they're gonna say oh wait no it's actually terrible because look do you see the bathroom is a, there's a there's a leak in the roof and there's 
but if I say, oh yeah, I, I can see why you'd want to sell this house. I, I mean, the, the roof's leaking. I mean, this is the, the grass. I mean, the whatever, whatever X, Y, Z problem. And, and like, they're like, oh, wait a minute. Well, the, I mean, I've been living here for 20 years. This is actually not a bad house. I, I know what I got. This is a great house. They're, they're accustomed to living there. And so if you push back, then, then whatever you say, if, if, you, if you say it, it's wrong. If they say it, it's right. So this is them convincing themselves why they want to sell. So when I say, even if it's a, it's a complete crapple, complete crapple say, dude, like, so I, I really like the character of this house. I really like the location. So, I mean, man, I mean, I'm just curious. What, what makes you want to sell such a great house? Well, and so you're asking open questions and like, well, actually, you know, I were, if I don't, I lost my job. And so, you know, we got behind on our payments. And so when they, when they say something, if you say like, if you just repeat, this is also in, in never split the difference, which I, I phenomenal book. If you say the last three, th last three words that they say, repeat it back to them in a question format and then shut up, it'll repeat it. So if they say, Oh, I lost my job. Like, Oh, you lost your job. And you shut up and then you don't say anything. So when I have my mentees come with me on, on when we're talking, when we're doing, uh, uh you know, negotiations, we're talking to people or they're on the phone, whether they're live, I tell them, Hey, listen, Frank, Frank's been on a few of them. Huh? Didn't I tell you this when I first, before we even jump on a phone call where, Hey, before I'm going to be talking to the seller and there will be moments where it's going to feel really awkward. There's going to be moments in silence that you will feel really awkward in and you will naturally want to start adding things in. Do not say that or I'll, 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 I'll I'm going to smack your rest of the face. You know, didn't I, didn't I say that? I didn't say smack your rest of the face, but didn't I tell you, Frank? To when we're on the phone with the, the couple of sellers we were on, to, like, don't don't jump in. I don't want you to help. In this case, awkward science is phenomenal. So then you shut up and you just look at them. And and then they're gonna they're gonna oh yeah well I mean I I got you know uh, there were some layoffs going on and so I, I they they laid me off oh you got laid off. And they look at them again and you just and so you're just pulling information out. Okay. So you're pulling information out and you can just, you know, if, if you're saying it in, in a concerned tone or, or a curious tone or, or confused tone, you know, um, you can definitely, you know, get a lot more information without them. Like feeling like you're given the, like the interrogation. Cause there's like the, always like the, the, the three whys or, or five. Oh, so why, why do you want to sell? You want, well, why do you want to do that? Why, 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 you know, that, that can be kind of like uh almost like interrogating, you know what I mean? But if you're just like, in a conversation and you're talking to them normally, then having, asking, repeating the last things, words they say, they're getting information out and things like, and you, you want to use the words like feel and not so much think or not much price, but you want to, you want to be in the emotional state, right? So like, so when you, when you lost your job and you, you couldn't, you know, making these payments, um, how did that, how did that make you feel? I mean, I'm sure that probably affected quite a few things and like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I felt terrible and, and, you know, then we go into, and you could really pull some stuff out. Right. And then, then you ask them questions like, okay, so, you know, if we, we can't come up with a, a good solution here and, and no one else really can, can help you at this point, what, what will happen? Oh, well, I mean, we'll lose a house. Oh, yeah. So what, where would you guys go? What, what would you do? And you have to do it in a, in a concern, like genuine, like, and you have to be genuine here. Like, well, well, really what? Tell me about that. Tell me more about that. And they'll start telling you like, oh, because now it's like emotionally, like if I, if I lose a house, it's going to affect my kids. Like I would feel a failure in front of my kids. I feel like I, I, as a man, I'm, I, I could not provide as, as the, the mother, she could not, Nurture her children. There's no place to nurture them in. So now we have the pain points, the real pain, the real pain points. It's not losing the house. It's what it makes them feel emotionally. And that's, that's the pain point. That's the pain. Like, oh, so, you know, I mean, assuming you get what you're looking for here, uh, what are you going to do with the money? If you don't want me asking and like, well, I mean, I gotta, I, I, I got pay up my, I use this example a lot, but I got pay up my truck. Okay. So I mean, how much is that? out of curiosity and you can say, I'm just curious or out of curiosity. 
that that usually allows you get a free pass with that trust me and so um they'll tell you like oh yeah well i mean i, I got twenty thousand on this and then uh, uh so okay well great and what else well i got this this and this okay phenomenal so now now you have things of what they what they they're going to do with the money and maybe they have like and we're and i'm going a little bit seller financing to this one too but it could be like you're just figuring out so maybe they they, they need they're asking for a hundred thousand dollars in equity um because that you know they're they're over asking because maybe they don't know what the price is what's what's actually worth but you need to get a certain you need to get it to be like you want the down payment like twenty thousand right like or maybe thirty thousand that's where you want the down payment in and so it's like oh. once you start going through their what they're actually going to spend it for like so once you you know pay off the truck and pay off those credit cards and not have to worry about the house anymore um what how would that affect your you guys in your in your family and so they're like oh well i mean shoot i mean the headache the weight and a lot of times you want to you want to get them in a place where you almost see in their body where it's like or you, or if you're on the phone you can hear in the tone of the voice like oh man how to be and you feel like almost a relief and so like oh yeah i mean it'd be great because i wouldn't have to work the phone calls would stop happening i mean i would i would you know obviously we'd find a place to rent and or or i'm gonna live with my we're gonna live with our parents but at least i wouldn't have to worry about that car payment or anything else until i get my get myself back on my feet like oh okay so once you get that once you get that like that relief or that you can see that emotion like okay that's that's where they're running towards right so now you know that what they're running away from and they're running, running away towards. So maybe they, they, they had $100,000 in equity they wanted to pull out, but the things that they really needed to accomplish, they only needed 30. Okay? So when you give them the offer, it's great news. It's great news. So then it's like, oh, okay. And you, you sandwiched your offer between the good and the bad. Oh, this is, and you're, you're doing the paperwork, you're doing, you're like, I'll, I'll have my notebook. And, and, and I will, I already know the number. I already know how much exactly I'm going to offer. So I'm writing, I'm like doing, and I'm pulling my phone out, doing math, calculate. Can you guys hang on for a second? I just want to see what I can do, help you out. And then and then after like three minutes or four minutes, and I'll, I'll, I'll let them sit in it in, in silence. And then they're like, oh, oh, this is going to be phenomenal. This is great. So even if it's like 70000 less than they were thinking, it's still great. Oh, this is phenomenal. So you remember how you told me that, you're worried about losing the house because of, you know, it would really affect your, your kids. I, I, this offers me phenomenal. So we can actually stop that and make it so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff anymore. So our offer is going to be, we're going to buy the property subject to the, the existing mortgage. And, and it, it's at this price. And so you'll actually walk away with over $30,000 so that you can pay off that truck and then have enough for those moving expenses we talked about earlier. And then so you don't have to worry about those phone calls coming in from your debtors. You don't have to worry about all that stuff and then you can actually start over again. So even though it's less what they're expecting, it's sandwiched in removing of their pain points and and what they're uh, what they're actually running towards. So they wanted $100,000 down minimum. If they agreed to each other too, but they still need the $100,000 down, but they're really only gonna spend 30. So it's like, oh dude, yeah, this is phenomenal. Here's what I can do. Your pain's gone, and then you still were able to pay off your truck and pay off those other debts. The phone calls are stopped. You're able to save the relationship with your family and and not feel like a deadbeat. You don't, you know, necessarily feel like a deadbeat, but you're using their words. Which, however, they say it. That's how you want to repeat it back to them. Okay, that's how you get people to really see. And because and, and it's not being taken advantage. Like for them, this is phenomenal. This is great. I had plenty of conversations where we started the conversation. Like I am never going. My my. Lowest is 250. You're not going to convince me otherwise. I'll never do creative financing, no seller financing, nothing like that. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, totally. No problem. You shouldn't. If you don't want to do it, you shouldn't do it. Absolutely. I agree with you. If you don't want to do it, that's not good for you, then don't do it. You know, whether I, I offer or someone else offer, don't. But let, can I ask you a couple of questions first? And we'll start going into it. And then at the end of the conversation, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I 200. I know I said, you know, there were 250. Like, yeah, 200. It, it does make sense. It does fix my problem. It makes sense for me to do this. They don't feel like they're being taken advantage of because they're getting what they need. If I just threaten an offer of 200000 without the context of me really knowing what they need and what they're running away from, it's like, 
dude, what? It, dude, get out of here, man. Trying to advance you, you, you money grubber investor trying to steal a man equity da, 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 and every every name of the book that that's what happened but getting those those key points that that's really get the yeses okay oh man i went i, I know i was going like a long tangent there but that's that's how you're talking about creative financing here right okay <laughs> um now going on i'm going through all the old comments here so can we talk about more of the balloon and when someone wants to buy a new home okay phenomenal so that that's going to be uh, an objection which, which we need to handle, right? A lot of times. So if the loan stays in their name and and they're going to, they, one day they're going to want to, they're going to want to buy a new property, you know, five years down the road, two years down the road, you know, because if, if it's a foreclosure circumstances, you know, th there's a lot of late payments on it. So they're not really going to have a ton of opportunities to buy a new home until, you know, at least a year minimum a year or, or, or three ahead in the future. So a lot of times they go rent with a family or whatever. Um, but maybe one day they like, ah, man, I mean, I, I get your point, but a lot of times, I mean, I, well, I still want to buy a house though. And if you have my work in my, in, in my name, I'm not going to be able to buy this other house. I'm like, Oh, I, I totally get that. And, and, and a lot, whenever they have the objection, you want to, um, you want to, uh, uh validate their concern and so you validate address then move on if any concern they have if you act like it's a big deal it's a big deal if you give them an offer and you you, you think they're you have your own blockage in your own head and you think they're this way too low that it's you 30,000 they wanted 70,000 to walk away from if you say oh man I can just give you 30 uh, that's it it's all we can do for down payment is 30 is that gonna work for you as opposed to, oh, this is great. I can give you 30, you know, same with objections. It's like, if, if you act like it's a big deal, like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it would be kind of hard to get a new loan. I mean, with this, so I don't know if it's work but instead, what you could do is this, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I have had a lot of people had that exact same concern when we did subject two. And, and I'll tell you what, when, when, uh, when we, when we do subject two, if you're planning to buy a house in how long ago in three to four years, yeah, because you're going to have to save up some money to do that too. After you're, you know, you have to wait and you have to save money. How long do you think it's going to take you to kind of save up for that ten percent down? And and you know, try and improve your credit. When not, oh well, gosh, it'll probably take me once I get a new job again. I mean, it'll probably take me a couple of years. Like, okay, so I mean, think probably like, is it more realistically to say like five years? You probably buy a new house. Well, yeah, yeah, probably. Okay, how about this? We're gonna we're gonna put in the paperwork where. There's a five-year balloon. So basically in five years, I, I have to, I'm going to make the payments on, on based on your behalf on the mortgage because I own the property at this point. And, and at five years, I have to either refinance or, or, uh, um, refinance, uh, or, or pay off the house myself in cash or whatever. So that's the balloon, you know? So offering a balloon is, is a good way to kind of get over that, that hurdle. Another thing too, is that if you're not a loan professional, then you know you want to make sure you you word things specifically. You don't want to pretend like you are. You like, you know, I I know a couple of loan guys, um, loan agents that once they they show paperwork showing that you know someone else is making that 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 mortgage payment, they almost count that as a rental. So it doesn't really affect your debt to to uh, a loan income. Now obviously you you have to check with your own your own loan person, but most of the time. It, it, it depending on which product you're getting, um, I know a lot of people where it didn't really affect them um, in the way that they were thinking because we have we'll have all the paperwork we'll, we're paying escrow so there's proof that that we are paying it not you guys you're not worried about it and and it's going to be a you know two years of of consistent payments I mean that's not really going to be a, a a big problem for you to get another loan uh, but I know you're gonna you're not, but I know you're gonna check on that yourself anyways but so here here's the next step here and so I address it and then move on. So that, those are the concerns. We put a balloon on it if they're worried about it. And then also, um, you, and it's true. Like if anyone here, that's a, 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 a loan person, right? There are some products and it depends on each state, right? There's a lot of products where a lot of account as a rental where it's like 80, only like only 20% or, or they'll be able to write off 80% or some of the hundred percent of, of that debt to, to income ratio. So it doesn't really mess, mess things up for them. Okay. Um, 
how to convince the seller to give you property subject to without them feeling like you're taking advantage of them. The easiest way to, to do this, kind of how I, I said how to earlier, Scarlett, but the easiest way to do that is to not take advantage of them. If you don't want them to feel like you're taking you're not taking advantage of them, don't take advantage of them. Offer them the deal that makes sense. You're saving them from the pain and you're giving them what they want, what they need. You're not taking advantage of them. You're giving them opportunities, okay? So explaining it how, when you wrap it around into the fears, right? Okay, uh, you can expand. Okay, you can expand and navigate. Uh, do one sell clause. Yep, that's another That's another uh, good example. Okay, so, so Nicholas says, can you expand how do you navigate a do on sell do on sell clause with the current uh, example obtained with a subject to and then the seller refi title has now moved twice. Obtain subject to and then seller refi. Oh, then seller and seller financing. Seller seller financing. Okay. Um, so do on sell clause for those who don't know. Like almost all mortgages has a have, they have a clause and it's called do on sell clause. So basically, if the sell if the property has been sold, the property is sold, they can call the note due. So even if we're doing subject two, um, they can call the note due. So basically, they're saying, like, okay, hey, listen here, we saw, I mean, hey, Mister Seller, you uh, sold this property six months ago and uh, the title changed. And so what, what's going on here? Like you sold the property, so the title change means we, we're going to, we're going to uh, call the note due. We're going to, you got to refinance it or, or pay it out. And usually they give you like, like 60 days, depending on, you can talk to them, figure things out. Um, and that's a very common concern with, with do one sell clause. I don't, it's not, it's not a big deal because I I've, I've done a plethora of them and never had the bank. The bank really cares. And here's a good context to think about. The bank doesn't care. They don't care about uh, where their payments are coming from. They just want the payments. They want the interest. On a traditional mortgage, those payments are going to be the most of the first, especially the first couple of years. That's like almost all interest. They want the interest. They don't want to have foreclosed on properties unless they have to. They don't want properties on their books because then they have to sell the loss typically. And they can't have a lot of properties on their books because then then the, the, the government comes a knocking. And so there's a certain criteria that they have to follow. So they don't want to foreclose on you. They, they care about, they care about um, um, the actual payments they're getting, right? So you have to have it set up correctly where you're not going to get yourself in trouble with, with the banks, right? So you're, you're going to need to have um, a limited power of attorney from, from the seller. So basically, it's this document saying that you can act on their behalf in this one category as far as the loan's concerned, right? So, if you go to the if I if I talk, go to the bank and say, hey, I'm I'm doing this this I'm going to buy this payments. I'm gonna do the payments for subject two. I'm going to make the payments for them. You know, I I try not to advertise my position to the to the to the to the lender, right? I mean, I'm never going to lie, never gonna, nothing like that. But I'm not going to advertise it to them, right? So they just care about the payments, right? So now I have the 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 act of attorney, like, Hey, so this, you know, I, um, John Doe is, is, um, I'm make, I'm going to start making payments through this account instead of this other account. Um, it's coming through my company. We're, we're just going to help them out and pay, pay their, pay their loan payments for them till the foreseeable future. And they don't care. They care about their payments. Now, if there's, if you're really concerned about that, there's a way you can kind of get around all of that too. If it's like, if it's, it's something that either you're concerned about or the seller's really, really worried about. And first of all, for the seller, it's not their, it's, if that happens, that's not their problem. It's your problem as a buyer. So that's something like, yeah, I totally get it. You know, actually, if it does come due and sell clause, that's something we have to care about. Cause if I, if I, if it did happen, heaven forbid, I would have to worry about that as far as refinancing or getting, getting another loan or just paying it out. Because otherwise I'll lose the property, and but you still kept all the money that I gave you, the down payments and any payments on top of that. So yeah, it, it, it it's our our challenge to worry about. Um, but if you're worried about it, you can do, you can have the seller before the, you get, title companies can do this for you. They can put the title into a trust, and the trust could be the name of the ad, like the address name or something like that. It's very common for people to put their properties into trusts. 
And so, like, it doesn't raise any red flags for for companies, for uh, for for lending companies, right? Um, America First, they're 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 kind of sticklers on it. Um, uh, Utah Housing, they're very sticklers on it. So, like, you have to be careful with those type of with those type of lenders, right? And so, you can put it into a trust, and that again, that doesn't necessarily raise any red flags because it's normal for it's perfectly fine for me to put my own property into a trust. It's, it's protection. It's, you know, if I die, I, it's all taken care of kind of scenario. And then what you do instead of buying the property, you buy the trust. And you're just making payments. So anything the trust is owns, you, you now own. So, and even if you sell it on seller financing, you can just sell the trust. And there's no title exchange. It's just the trust is being transferred ownership. The title on record doesn't, doesn't change. It's still, the trust still owns it. Just whoever's control of the trust changes. Right? So there's plenty of ways to, to kind of get that, right? Um, love it, love it, love it. Okay. Uh, what contracts do you use to set up a sub to or do you outsource to a TC? Uh, you, the contracts is, you can do a traditional Repsy, right? Whether you're, you have your own or you're using the Utah Repsy um, or whatever state that you're in. And then you have a, a, a subject to addendum, right? So I just, I have my template that I use. A subject to addendum, it's basically saying like, hey, we're buying, because again, subject to is, is shorthand for uh, purchase is subject to the existing financing. So it's going to have that on there, the addendum. It's going to have how much they how much they owe, what the payments are, if there's going to be a balloon on it, or if there's going to, you know, whatever the interest is, whatever their payment is, and then you're going to pay it to an escrow company. So in subject to is do not make the payments to the seller and hope that they make the payment because guess what? They're probably not. So you, so you set up, you, you pay a, a, an escrow company like 20 bucks a month, money well spent. One, you have proof that you've made the payment through, and, and an escrow company will, will pay, will pay the, um, the mortgage. And if you hit like a wraparound, they can pay the mortgage and then pay the seller and, or any other debts that need to be paid off kind of the scenario. So you have evidence on that stuff, right? Um, and that's real. And, and in addition to that, you need the, the, power of attorney, the limited power of attorney, you need to have their contact information. You need to have like their, their, the sign on so you can get into whatever paying platform is, because here's the thing. Once you close on it, sometimes the sellers can be hard to get a hold of because like what they don't care about some like whatever, Jared, I mean, that's, it's your problem now. You can't, you can't make a payment. Okay. Well, that's your problem. So you, not all of them will have that same attitude, but some will. So you want to make sure you have all that information lined up and ready to go. Um, also in the denim, you want to make sure you're putting in who's getting tax benefits of paying interest. Make sure that's clear that like you're going to get the benefit of paying the, the, the interest, the tax, the tax benefits for that. Okay. Uh, awesome. If this hope this answer answering guys the questions. Okay, so what contracts we use? That's good. Both parties must sign a limited uh, agency agreement if agree if if the agent is, re is representing both sides. Yes, absolutely, that's correct. Uh, when you're not using your own money in subject two, how do you structure the private money and partnerships? Like a scenario when you had to do a flip with with it or keep the house for your own personal use. Okay, great great question, Juan. When you're when you're setting up because. If you're trying to do like a, a you like pri, like hard money lenders, they don't usually lend on subject to because hard money they like to be in first position. So if anything happens to the property when you sell the property, they're the first one to get paid, and then anything in second, third, fourth position to get paid accordingly, whatever whatever's left over. Okay. So the first position you're the most protected, but your traditional mortgage is going to be first position. You can't like knock that out of first. So hard money lenders typically. They won't lend on like the, for the down payment and like for, you know, maybe they'll lend on, on rehab, but they typically won't do that. So for private, you can either, depending on how you got it structured, if you have someone that that's going to come and put in the money for like the down payment or pay, paying the equity out, sometimes it's very little. It's like 5,000 bucks. It's usually less than what you pay for a car. If you negotiate well enough, that's how much you would, you, you need to actually buy a property subject to. Okay. So. That 10, 20, 30 grand that you may need actually. And a lot of times, most of the money goes to um, catching them up if they're behind on payments. 
That's what most of the money goes to. And then they get the 5,000 or 30,000 or whatever it is so that they can walk away. Um, what was, oh my gosh, what was the question again, Juan? Uh, oh yeah, structuring, yes, yeah, for, so you just put, if, the, if it's a Lenny position, if your if your private money partners just like, yeah, pay me interest, whatever, then they just go on title as a second position, that's it. If it's like a, a, a partnership, then it's like a JV. So, you know, whatever it may be, they're, they're buying into the deal with this, this amount, and then this is the terms of it. When we sell the property, you're gonna get so much of the equity, profits and loss, you know, might lose money. Like every, if you partner with anybody, make sure you, you can lose money, right? You can't guarantee any any returns unless it's like a lending position, then that's more that's more okay because you're charging me X percent interest until I pay off pay off the debt, right? So that's how it's structured. Put things in, in second position or put them in as an equity partner. Um, if you're doing a flip, that, that'd be phenomenal, right? That, that's, that, that's usually pretty quick. Um, or if, or if it's keeping it for yourself, then, then yeah, it's most likely gonna be a second position. Okay. Okay. Um, role. Okay. Yes. I guys want to do the, do the role playing conversations. I like that. Awesome. All right. Hey, my wife's on there. Hey, all right, cool. Okay. What other questions do you have? I'm going through, um, have you told me, you have told me that before. Okay. I'm not sure what you meant. Jeremiah, probably something I was saying, but uh, yes, you have good conversation skills. So thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. Uh, the live makes me want to do uh, fantasy. What? Okay. So good points. Thank you. Okay. Let's say that the bank does care and calls it due. How would one go about it? Okay. That's a great question. I personally have not had this happened, um, but let's, Let's just say, you know, cause it's a possibility and, and you need to have that in mind when you are doing that. Cause like, what happens if it does happen? Like what, what will happen? Right. Sometimes, it, and do they usually give you enough time? A lot of times you, you, you can negotiate with, with the, the banks too. Cause that, and this is mostly from, from other people that actually had experience that I've, that I've talked to my mentors and other people that I've that had some, some bad luck. There's not a lot like over the hundreds of transactions like this, like, one or two really when something's called due, but you need to keep that in mind that may happen. So if it does happen and the banks just won't work with you, whatever one, if you send a payment and they accept it, they, then, then, then you're golden. They can't call it new because they've, they've accepted those terms. Check with the attorney first, but they, they accepted the payment. Like they're taking the payment. So, but it would be, you would have time enough, typically like 60 to 90 days before they would actually like, like call it due. They give you notice, all that stuff. And so you would have that time frame to kind of either refinance, maybe you're, cause if you're doing a flip, like, okay, all I need is an extra two more months to sell this thing. And then, so I don't care. It doesn't matter. Right. If you're doing a flip, typically it's not, not really going to be too big of a challenge. Even if they did. So it's like, eh, okay. Yeah. Call it due. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the market here next week. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, but rental, whatever. Then, then like, what am I doing? I got to refinance it. I got to bring in an equity partner. You got to have an idea of what you would do in case that does happen. Right, if the if it does get called called due. Um, okay, okay. Okay, so let's say okay. So what about a homeowner or insurance already existing in the property, and that can flag there has been a title change, right? So for as far as like in, in insurance goes, that's another thing that we would have to make sure is that you are put it, you are put on their insurance as a payee because their, their insurance is still going to stay in place. So, cause part of making the payments is that their escrow is paying insurance and also taxes, right? So you need to make sure that, that in, in their insurance policy is now that you are the payee. So fire burns down. And if, if you were not on the payee, let's say if fire burned down your, burned, burned down your property and then they have insurance on it, phenomenal. Great. Um, one, if you're not on the payee, then it's 200,000 to, to, to fix it. Then they write a check out. They don't normally write a check like that, but they, you know, they try to get things fixed, whatever, but there's a chance that they write a check to the, to the seller of the 200,000 instead of you. Like we don't want that. So you want to make sure that you're the payee on those insurance. Another, you may want to do uh, an addition, depending on your circumstances, additional insurance on top of that, because 
one, a lot of times those insurance are, are for homeowners. Like you're living there, like they're, you're living in the insurance or excuse me, you're living in the home. And so it covers, if you, if you change it to investment property, it doesn't cover a lot of those things. You have to have different type of insurance or it's like a flip. You have the different kind of insurance. So you want to make sure you're insured regardless of, of whatever happens. Okay. And so, yeah, it, it can't like, as far as flagging, like on their end, um, with insurance, I, I really haven't had any challenges whatsoever in insurance. I, as long as that you're on the, on the, as a payee, like they, they want their payments, right? Like that makes sense. So it, it's not really a big of a challenge. It's just make sure that you are set as the payee. That's the biggest, biggest thing. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Great questions, guys. Great questions. Uh, what about home? Okay. We talked about that. Okay. Uh, you would just have a ref refinance quick, get a hard money lender and then refi when you can. Yep. Travis, you're right. hundred percent. Right. Yep. Perfect. Perfect guys. This is phenomenal. I love it. We're got a little over, but I really, it's, it's really, really cool. Some of the stuff you can do with, with subject two. Um, and also a, a thing that I wanted to talk about real quick too, because sometimes people are worried about one of the biggest concerns, objections that I get is, well, what if you stop making payments? And this is true for seller financing subject to any type of creative financing. What if you stop making payments, Jared? Okay. Oh, oh I totally get that. You know, a lot of people that we do work with has the exact same challenge or has the exact same concern. So it makes perfect sense that you'd be concerned about that too. But here, here here's the thing, Mr. Seller, like we're going to make a, a, a payment to you of, of, you know, over $30,000 down as a down payment. And we already talked to you about kind of the stuff that we're going to have to do as far as repairs and, and fixing things up. So that's another $70,000 we're going to have to put into the property just so we can put a renter in here or flip or whatever you're doing. Uh, so we're not really in a, in a business where we can, where we are going to put down $100,000 into a property and then stop making payments. That's not the business we run. So anyways, and then you move on to the next step, right? So you just break things down to them, not condescendingly. And it's just like, oh yeah, like a matter of fact, you know, oh, you validating the concern, right? So they 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 feel smart that they were that they're thinking about that. Yep, that, that and it is a good that's a good question. You want to make sure that's taken care of. Like, what happens if I, I go to Mexico and just disappear? And and uh, and like the, the great thing about this is like if 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 I did stop and they still have concerns about it, like you know if I did stop making payments, you know what would happen is you would actually take over the property, and you would keep any payments that I have made to you, including that down payment including paying out your equity and plus any payments that were made on the mortgage as we're paying down the mortgage, you would gain that equity plus any appreciation. So in reality, if I, if I stop making payments, you make more money. The worst case scenario is I stop making payments is actually the best case scenario for you. So now what, what their fear is, is like, Oh, I kind of want Jared to go to Mexico. Cause then I'll, I can just put this back on the market. And, or, or maybe has a renter in there. Great. I have a rental property that's paying the mortgage now. And he, Jared just disappeared. He went away or, you know what I mean? So now like the, when, when the worst case scenario becomes their best case scenario, it's hard for them to say no. You can also do something called a deed in lieu of foreclosure. So they're really concerned about this. This is, this is usually it's a staple down. So like what we can do to really help you with that concern, cause I get where you're coming from we can do something called a deed and loom foreclosure. Basically what that means is whatever terms we agree upon, let's just say if I, if I'm more than 45 days late on, 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 on the payment to the mortgage, that'll actually, we'll have this paperwork of basically of me foregoing the rights to foreclosure process. Cause that's very expensive. It takes a lot of time. You get attorneys involved, all that stuff. We're just going to take that paper saying like, I don't want, I am foregoing those rights 100%. If, if I, I, if I go into these, if, if I make, if I'm 45 days late, if I'm more than 45 days late in my payment and I give and we're giving that paperwork to the escrow company that we're paying. And if that happens, it's like a, it's like a guillotine over my neck. So that happens like the title company can transfer over the deed into, into your, your name again. And then all those benefits we talked before is now yours. And you can just resell the property, keep it as a rental, whatever. And you make more money. So. Deed in lieu of foreclosure has been clutch. I don't offer that unless they bring it up, unless they're concerned about it because it, it, who knows what can happen in the future, right? If, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I want to have my, my rights to have a foreclosure process if that ever does occur, heaven forbid. But so I don't want to give that to them unless it's, and the same with like, 
anything else you want to do. Like if your budget is, we can do fifty thousand dollars down, and and it makes sense. You want to offer thirty, and then you know as a incentive, like oh yeah, you only need thirty. Yeah, so that. What if we what if we what if we up to like ten more? Would that make sense? You know, you don't want to give them all your cards all at once. As objections happen, you're, you're giving this this to fix that objection um, if it comes up. Okay. Uh, here we're gonna wrap this, we're gonna wrap things up here pretty quick, pretty quick here, guys. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Talked about that. Okay. Here's a, okay. So Leo asks, any examples of sub two deals that went south? Anything you didn't see initially, and how did you uh, re uh, render it? And thanks, Jared. Um, Great alive. Okay. Cool. So. Things that I've that went south, it's usually like before we buy it. You know, once we buy it, the due diligence has been taken care of. It makes sense. A lot of times, when you're dealing with sellers and they're in tough situations, you want to believe everything that they're telling you, but you need to confirm it. So if they're saying they're behind thirty thousand dollars in the mortgage, oh great, yeah, I just need it. I just need to get confirmation on that. What's your last billing statement and da da da. Cause I've had people like, yeah, we're, we're behind 30,000 and it turned out they were behind 50. So $50,000 is a lot, right? So a lot of times the, the getting, getting proof and you're not saying, I need, I need to make sure you can prove that, you know, like, okay, great. Just, and you always use a third party as, as the bad guy, like my title company, they're, they're going to want to see the statements. They're going to want to see all this stuff here. Or my partner, really, he's very stickler in this. He's going to want to yell this stuff. So you're using like a third party out there. Usually I use the title company or whatever. In order for them to get paperwork done, we need all of the dats down to the penny. Otherwise, they can't do this. So it's not like, like oh, yeah, well, you said third. I don't know. I don't know how true that is. So can you just show proof, you know, use use the third party to point the finger, right? Which is true. A title company does need, need, just make sure you're not lying. They do need to see that information, right? So you find out another challenge is like there's more liens on the property than they let on. There was one that we had. I mean, it was a tight deal already. And they, <laughs> the agent that was, it was incompetent. It was a very, very interesting deal. So it was a tight deal already. We're doing subject two. And we, there was like liens popping up like crazy. So as they were doing title work, like there was like RC Willie lien. There was, uh, uh, um, they, they said they didn't have any liens on there for like their, the, like, three or four judgments were on the, on the property that they didn't know about and they needed to have X amount of money or they, or they, and so literally because all the liens were on it, it didn't make sense for us to do it. Like they had, they were, we were going to give them about, it was like five to 10,000. I can't remember the exact number. Um, after all said and done, so they could, you know, pay for the moving expenses. That's basically what that was all about. Cause they were getting divorced and they're separating. So, you know, some here, some there. And it, it like for them, it was like, because there's so many liens, like we, we got to make sure that that's, it has to be zero. Like you're going to walk away. You're, you're not going to have a foreclosure in your record on your, on your credit report. And you're going to be able to get out, you know, have whatever the pain point was. So yeah, it, it's going to, you're basically walking away with almost nothing. Uh, maybe, maybe a thousand or two and that's about it. And so they, they, they opted to just let the property go to foreclosure because they would be able to live in there an extra month. And even after explaining, like, I mean, I'm no, I'm no tech, I'm no credit expert, but I know people that, you know, it's on their record for seven years. It's hard for them to apply for other things. I mean, are you concerned about that? And this is where the, the agent wouldn't let me talk to the seller. So it's a lot of, he said, she said, and then it, it just didn't pan out. So extra liens. Um, and sometimes you can't, those are the deals you walk away from sometimes, you know, if it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You move on, you know, um, phenomenal guys. I love this. I love this. It's been, it's been a good call. I went a ton of changes, went a little bit over, but that's okay. I think, I think we got some good information. If you find this valuable, make sure to like, like this page or like this live, share it, um, to, to your groups, to your personal pages, you know, let's, let's break the algorithms. If, if you guys have more questions and actually would like to have, uh, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, what is, is this going to be something that, you know, maybe you're already doing real estate. You want to add a couple more strategies to your game. Let's have a conversation. If we can possibly work together. I don't know. Maybe not, maybe not right for you. So in, in the chat, there should be a, a link for a nine minute conversation. Or even if you go to my bio, there's a link on there, a link tree where you can actually schedule a nine minute conversation with, with me. 
it, pick, it has my calendar. You click on it. We have a conversation. See if it makes sense or not. If it doesn't work together, then or for us to work together, that's fine too. Uh, put in the comments if you guys uh, enjoyed this. If this is awesome, uh, let's partner on a deal. I love it. Heck yeah, let, let's let's do it. I love partnering with people. That that has been. I mean, it, it's a great one lead lead source, and and it's it's phenomenal to help people get people. When I help people get get on their their first transaction, it's a lot of fun. I'd love to see their excitement, and it's crazy how. The last couple guys that I helped get into a deal, they were doing YouTube University before, and I'll use Dave as an example. So he was using YouTube YouTube University for like four and a half years. He was buying programs online, and and they were promised in the world that they're going to get mentors and coaches, and there's a community, and nothing, the no promises were were unfilled. And and I, I don't know the companies. I mean, there's sure there's some good ones out there. I don't know, but nothing happened. And then he got connected with me. We got him plugged in. And then within you know a couple of months, he got his first transaction. In fact, we're 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 under contract for his second transaction, like with the two weeks later. So yeah, it, it it's pretty cool what you can do. It's just taking action and just doing it, you know, getting hand handheld kind of. So phenomenal, guys! I love this. Put in the awesome. If you guys had a, if it was helpful, put in the chat. It was helpful. Loved it. Something or this is a waste of my time. Whatever it is. Put it in the chat right now. I uh, appreciate you guys. Let's uh, let's blow this thing up. I appreciate everyone, and this has been a lot of fun. So, reach out. Let's have some nine-minute conversations, and uh, see if this is if we work together. Let's partner some deals. I like it. Okay. All right, guys. If that is everything, I pre let me make sure there's less, no more. Oh come on. No more dashboard. There we are comments going on and I lost my whole thing here welcome loved it thank you it's been amazing to work with you and have a, a change our lives oh thanks Tyson appreciate it, man cool oh Tyson's a great example guys this month is his first month of of uh, not work not working his day job Tyson was his his wife reached out to me like two years ago 18 months ago give or take whatever it was and she said if you don't mind me sharing Tyson but she said um, I need your help getting my my, my husband home because he was a truck driver i need your help i need help getting I, we need to make more money we need to change things in our finances i need help i need him home because tyson you're gone with what 10 months of the year pretty much when you add it all up so he's gone most most of the year and this month is the first month that where he he would have normally been on the road right now but now he's home so i mean that uh, when nancy told me that i mean it was, it was a lot of tears not gonna lie but it was such a cool such a cool moment to see that so Awesome guys, love it, love it, appreciate you, and um, yeah, very helpful, oh, sweet, awesome. Okay, all right, I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll do some role playing on the next one, It'll be fun.